all, we are about to begin a webinar on uh, um, the film industry in Pakistan, or I should say the uh, industry, film and television or content producing industry, whichever way you like to call it. So let me just ask everybody to mute their mics and let the speakers go first so that we can, uh, and afterwards everybody will have a chance to speak. There's no question about it. We allow everybody to speak. We want an open debate. We want to make sure that there is a debate in Pakistan, which is beyond a favorite subject. I don't know what that is, but that's besides the point. Okay, folks, here it is. We are having the first in a series of webinars on the movie industry. We are trying to do a series on almost every subject in Pakistan. And I think it's important to recognize that this is an important but neglected industry and a very neglected industry. It kind of hovers around on the side of um, neglect as well as uh, positive disdain as well as kind of an outlaw category. Um, and I won't go into that at any length, neither do we need to. Um, and, uh, but it's an important industry and I'll tell you why, why PID is interested in it. So please mute your mics, let the speakers speak first. We've got an excellent panel. We've got too many good people. So let's hope we can keep the intervention short, but that's really up to the panelists. I'm not out here to interfere. I'm just here to introduce them. Uh, we've got Peer Saad Asuddin, young entrepreneur who's making, started making cineplexes or movie theaters. And when I met him, I was kind of surprised. Comes from Harvard and wants to make movies and not run a bank, which is uh, bizarre, but nevertheless to each his own. Um, then we've got Kamran Lashari, he's a famous civil servant, you know him all. Um, his his um, came to fame, he's also acted in movies. He's, uh, he's a big star in a uh, movie called War. His son is a producer or director, but at the same time, one important reason to have Kamran on and ask him is the state of movies in our cities, and we'll talk to him about that. Then, of course, we've got Sarmad Khusat. Everybody knows him, now a famous director, actor. I loved his movie, Manto. Um, but he's got much more to his credit. And uh, yes, of course, we'd love to hear from him. Rising young star, his father was a great star too. Uh, he struggled through many difficult times, his father. And now I think uh, Sarmad is making a great name for him. Then we've got Kamal Khusat, another film producer, TV and uh, theater director, another famous star. Uh, thank you both uh, Sarmad and Kamal, uh, Kamal for joining us. Then we've got Marine Jab Jabbar, a TV uh, film director and producer, again, a well-known personality. And we've got my old friend, Faris Kirmani, who's now a very well-known director in England, made a number of very good movies and documentaries. So let's get started. I will do my little thing before, just a little bit to introduce you to why we are interested in movies. Many people say, hey, why should the economists be interested in movies? And I can tell you, economists are very selfish creatures. We are not interested in movies for the sake of movies, so don't get us wrong, please. It's not that we like movies. We just like the money made in movies. To show you what the market is like, just look at this. This is the chart that I got just pulled off Google. Pakistani searching for subjects. And you can see that movies dominates even cricket. Cricket is in red, movies is in blue. Cars is in green. The economy is in yellow. So the economy is nowhere near movies. The economy is a dull subject, but movies is an interesting subject. And as an economist, wherever we see something like this, we see a market. So there is a market in movies and why is Pakistan not exploiting it? So my interest in movies is just that. It's basically the fact that we have a market out there that we are ignoring, okay? Look at the worldwide situation. Number of jobs in Hollywood, this is 2 million. And you can see revenue generated uh, from in Hollywood is 35. I'm not sure whether this is correct, but the key thing is it's very big business now, very big business. We can go through these things, but even more fun is this. There are 48 movies that have made more, more than a billion dollars. Avatar has made $2.5 billion. Hell, that's more than any industry in Pakistan. You know what the net, oh, you, sorry, the market cap of Engro is? 
one billion dollars. So Avatar made more money than Engro and maybe OGDC put together. Seven billion movies, um, what is that? Sorry, I've got that wrong. So Indian movies, sorry, that was Indian. Seven Indian movies made over a hundred million dollars. Chinese movies, three made a billion dollars. Everybody knows about content and streaming wars that are taking place in the world now. Disney, Apple, Amazon, um, you know, Netflix, etc. Netflix is worth $208 billion. So this is the economist's interest in movies. Yet in Pakistan, Saad, please note, and Kamran, both of you have to answer this. Apparently there are 95 cinemas in Pakistan. 95? That's like nothing. Even Turkey has 2,100 cinemas. UAE 255, a little, tiny little thing, smaller than Lahore, has 255 million, uh, 255 screens, sorry. Iran has 596 screens. We have 95, Saad, you've got a lot of work to do. So you'll have to tell us about this. Now, why are we interested? Pakistan has a youthful problem, a youthful problem. Two million kids enter the market every year. We tell them there's no street vending, there's no jobs, and not even movie jobs. They can't even give sell popcorn, they can't do anything. So what do we do? And not to forget the soft power of movies. Look at the power that Hollywood ha Bollywood has, and Hollywood has, and now China is gaining, and now Arthrugul, for example, conquered Pakistan. And I must show you this, you movie producers, our long run growth is going down, your market is going down. And this is something to worry. Our investment is way down. Nobody wants to invest in Pakistan. And that is subject, if they don't want to invest in Pakistan, why should they invest in movies? And we are dollar aid dependent. This was said by our ancestors in 1950. And none of you have made a movie on how aid dependent we are. So maybe that's a content for your next movie. We are beholden to fund, we are beggar, we are beggars. This is worth repeating. That's why we repeat it every webinar, so don't worry about it. But this is the state of our economy. The IMF, the fat guy, and I confess, I worked for the IMF for 30 plus years, so fine, I'm guilty. But a government is running helter skelter, we are running helter skelter for loans over a craggy landscape. That is the place where we are. Now in Pied, we do a number of webinars just to find out what the problem is, what industries, what is moving industry, what is not moving industry. Our goal is always making money. Our goal is always seeking employment. And that's why we want to talk to you. And we find there's a lot of problems. Some of the problems are the governments. In fact, most of the problems are the government. There's also another problem. It lies in the set mentality in our culture. Everybody wants to be a set. Nobody really wants to be a professional. It lies in the fact that we don't have professionalism anywhere. I don't know whether it's true in the film industry or not. Let me. We'll get to that, but we'll see later. So cinema industry, we want to talk about from the industry point of view, we don't care about your career, creative problems, but sure, you're open to event on those two. But the mainly, mainly what you're interested in the, is in your constraints to producing movies, your constraints to excelling, your constraints to producing the next Avengers Endgame, or whatever you like it, like to call it, but to produce a billion dollar movie. What are the taxes? I remember a long time ago, I checked the taxes were huge on tickets. Is that correct? What are the taxes that are bothering you? What is the space and zoning issue that is bothering you? Why can't Saad set up more, you know, thousand screens in a few um, years, for example? Um, what about the financing? I don't know whether you're aware or not, Treasury Secretary Munchen was now about to go out with Donald Trump was famous for being in Goldman Sachs. That's why he got the job. But in, while in Goldman Sachs, he made a number of movies. He has his own production company and is a famous movie investor and maker. So why can't people invest in movies? Why can't you know people, ordinary people invest in? Why can't Mancha invest in movies? Why can't Hashwani invest in movies? And then what about training? Do you have enough training facilities? Do you have enough trained professionals? I see a lot of young people now have come with training. Um, and finally, intellectual property rights. So let me begin uh, with asking, getting an international perspective, then we'll drill down. So Faris, can you quickly give us an international perspective on movie making and where do you think Pakistan stands there? Then we'll drill down. Go ahead, Faris, the floor is yours.
सर प्लीज अनम्यूट योर सेल्फ फारिस अनम्यूट योर सेल्फ या कैन यू हेयर मी ना या वी कैन हेयर यू फाइन गो अहेड so so i'll talk about the british film industry and the british television industry because i've been working in it for the last 35 years or so um i'm it's sort of in britain it generates about 3 billion pounds a year um in uh, the exports just for from uh, independent production companies are worth about 1.25 billion pounds bbc itself sells its own programs and earns about 2 billion pounds a year just by selling its own, the programs it has made itself so it's quite big it, it employs about 100000 people um it's british dramas but surprisingly enough british documentaries including natural history programs do fantastically well they sell all over the world um and they have you know big names uh, david attenborough people like that uh, presenting them then also hollywood comes to britain i mean there are in shepperton and in teddington studios films are james bond films are shot here um you know avengers short hair star wars short hair so because it has britain has this huge pool of trained technicians cameramen sound recorders set designers there's a lot of investment in training and uh, i think this is something which we should talk about for in pakistan to have a proper film schools there um and the bbc Uh, also invests in films not only just uh, television drama it also has a film unit it invests in cinema channel 4 has a, its own department film on 4 they it invests in cinema so and the bfi the british film institute invests in cinema and that's that money comes from the government so three or four sources of investment three or four sources of financing and of course you have uh, private uh, independent uh, studios disney mgm all that kind of stuff um i make documentaries i sell documentaries all over the world um you know uh, there is a big demand for that and i think that is something again which in pakistan we should think about but obviously the subjects have to be such that they resonate both in drama and in documentaries the subjects have to resonate with an international audience it can't be too culturally specific if it's too culturally specific then it gets limited in my view mm-hmm. so that is how uh, that's what happens and and we make now we make films about subjects which are to do with uh um, british asian life british black lives um stories about our history stories about you know the colon- the 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 immigration and migration things that which have been going on here since 1950s race relations we deal with all these kind of subjects and these programs sell i mean it's, it's surprising how much in demand these programs are all over the world so it's basically it's looking at our own history and 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 his, and program on history sells i made a i made a program on the ottomans if you've sold that program all over the world um you know so it's one would have thought ottomans history who's going to buy it who's interested in it but no there's a lot of interest in it so that's the sort of scale of things which i work on and which are um, which are here in london and i think it is something which the pakistani film and television industry should look at which is how to internationalize itself and how to go for a bigger market in turkey as you say they've just done that and um, i work do a lot of work in turkey i've shot quite a lot of uh, programs in turkey used uh, turkish technicians and they tell me that since the the popularity of turkish dramas all over the world tourism has gone up by 500% <laughs> the middle east audiences saw for the first time what a beautiful city istanbul was on their on their doorstep and instead of flying off to paris or rome or to london they uh, started going to places like istanbul and so television has led to a huge boom in the tourist industry which obviously is a big thing for the economy so it can happen uh but obviously the subjects have to be such that as i said they resonate and people are, are elsewhere in the world would want to watch them 
Okay, thank you, Faris. Thank you. Sarmad Sahib, let me come to you. You are a producer, director, star, etc., everything. Why don't you tell us about the Pakistani industry? What is it that's holding you guys back? Uh, you come from a film or a television, whatever, acting family. Your father, as I said, is a very well known star of my time. So, what is holding you guys back? Why is this not a vibrant industry like Bollywood? Or please, Urdu bhi bol sakne, koi asi baat nahi. we don't have to stick to English. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Can I please go uh, next in, 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 after another speaker, maybe? I'm oh, that's why I'm going on you now. That's I'm why I'm so going on now, Sarmad. Sorry, I'm just struggling with my computer right now. Oh, <laughs> so, Sorry. Boli, hmm. Boli. No, he wants to go a bit later, uh, uh, Nadim. He's he's got his uh, problem with the computer. Sarwal Sahib, you can't you can't hear. Okay, then let me come to Kamran Lashari. Kamran Sahib. Ji, Assalamu Alaikum. You are now a producer as well, but can you please tell us why have the number of cinemas shrunk in our lifetimes, Kamran Sahib? This is a part of uh, administration. You are a famous city administrator. What happened? Why did the number of cinemas shrink? Uh, uh, Nadeem Sab, thank you. I've just joined in and uh, salam to all the participants, friends. Actually, uh, this uh, has worried all of us, including myself. And, uh, when I was uh, posted in Islamabad, a lot of uh, diplomats would ask, ask me this. They would say, what kind of capital do you have where there's not even a single cinema uh, or a concert hall? So uh, we, we have seen that it wasn't like this in 1950s and up to 60s. Uh, we, we were a flourishing uh, cinema industry. And, and uh, our younger days uh, have a great nostalgia of how, how uh, blooming the cinema was. So what went uh, wrong and where did it all happen? I, I think uh, one is, of course... Uh, that the cinema became very um, static also in its, uh, you know, after some blockbusters, but it became more of a one theme movie, the Jat so and so and um, Gandasa so and so. Um, so, so one, I think that, that uh, we were trying to pull it too far. And then uh, the Urdu movies. Uh, decline and then most of all I think it was uh, General Zia's period where the whole cultural scene changed in uh, Pakistan uh, so and the cinema seemed to have mm, uh, you know because it, it uh, needs some kind of a liberalism also the dances are there so there could be some uh, provocative scenes and this is part of the but but there were so many uh, restrictions and then there was a excise tax for a long time and um, or, or the entertainment tax. So all these things made cinema become uneconomical. And uh, the people started pulling down their cinemas where, and converting them into, into, into shopping centers or something. We, we have to understand that cinema does not belong to a to government or, on, or it's not even on a government land. It's, it's a private property, which has a certain market value. So why should anybody convert his land into a cinema unless it is a profitable business. Mm. So, uh, and, and then later, mm. there was some rejuvenation we all saw in the recent years. Um, and then uh, with Shweb Mansoor coming in and some other friends and um, Sarma Saab and then uh, some other. So, so, but then it has been few and far between. And I think... Uh, it was the Indian cinema. It was the, and, and, and I would say that as long as we were competing with Indian movie and we had learned to be competitive, here we are talking about, you know, internationalizing our product, but we are not ready to even compete with our own neighbor. Mm -hmm. So uh, we um, stopped bringing in movies, but now when they were reintroduced, it helped boost the cinema. And mm -hmm. as soon as, they got uh, uh, banned again. So we saw that instead of uh, giving a boost to the cinema, it mm -hmm. declined the cinema. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, so it's a chicken egg and an egg. One is the cinema, one is the product, the movie. One without the other doesn't. Uh, it's it's uh, like 
two wheeled cart and and uh, a lot of our producers said ji agar nahi aayegi india se film to dekhe hamari film ko bahut fayda hoga aur ye hum badi boost karenge aur ye ho jayega now for now many years there is no sir. so so i think uh, we have to look inwards basically and protection ne to... protection ne kharab kiya jaise gaadiyon ko kharab kiya waise filmon ko bhi kharab kiya ji i think so 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 aur uh, com- competitive hone mein shayad hume time lagega effort lagegi but there is this world cannot you can't go very far or be sustainable unless you are competitive aur uske liye hame ek alada bas ki zarurat hai ki how can we be let's, let's but, ask but, but, if he if he's got his mic working sarman sahab aapka mic chal pada hai chale fir kamal are you there kamal bibi kamal khusat no then let's go to mehreen jabbar mehreen can sir, you kamal is there sir kamal is there sir acha kamal can you speak please आप बताइए ये जो कामरान साहब ने चार्ज लगाया था द फिल्म इंडस्ट्री इज अनकम्पिटेटिव एंड यू नॉट यू स्पेसिफिकली बट द फिल्म इंडस्ट्री इज हिडन बिहाइंड प्रोटेक्शन कि जी इंडिया से हम बच के रहेंगे वगैरह कम्पीट नहीं करेंगे तो इंडस्ट्री तो अब चल नहीं रही तो आप लोग जो यंग लोग आए हैं ऑब्वियसली यू आर मेकिंग एफर्ट्स और आपकी काफ़ी अच्छी फिल्में भी आ गई हैं तो आप बताइए कि क्या अब आप कम्पीट कर सकते हैं दुनिया के साथ और क्या आपके कंस्टेंट जी अगेन बहुत क्वेश्चन है और आई एम अफ्रेड आई वुड नॉट हैव एज पैनोरामिक ऑफ एनाउंस एज दी अदर पार्टिसिपेंट्स ऑफ दिस पैनल वुड हैव मेरा बहुत लिमिटेड सा एक्सपीरियंस है इन कंपैरिजन टू द रेस्ट ऑफ द पैनलिस्ट ऑफ कोर्स एंड आई विल कम फ्रॉम माय ओन परसपेक्टिव आई रिमेंबर आई वाज आई वाज आई वाज अ यू नो मेंबर ऑफ द ऑडियंस बैक इन द 90s जब उर्दू फिल्मों का बूम कहा जाता है एंड वी वर फॉर वन यू नो वर अ फैमिली जिनके you know family ke andar mein pehle se all india radio se start karke all india pakistan uh, all, uh, radio and then you know pakistan radio and tv and film ke andar mein sari family thi uh, hum log wo log family bhi the ke jo har weekend ke upar mein cinema bhi jaya karte the and theater bhi jaya karte the dekhne ke liye and 90 was a booming period for both the industries and they did operate as an industry also uh, 90s mein bhi us ke se ke tv bhi utna hi supportive tha hamari filmon ke liye इंट्रोडक्टरी प्रोग्राम आने शुरू हो गए थे खबरनामे के बाद में और वी वुड लुक अप एंड यू नो लुक फॉरवर्ड टू कि कौन कौन सी फिल्म्स आ रही हैं और कौन सी उर्दू है और कौन सी पंजाबी है एंड दैट वाज आल्सो द टाइम जब पंजाबी फिल्मों का डिक्लाइन था एंड दैट वाज एग्जैक्टली द टाइम व्हेन सुल्तान राही साहब आल्सो गॉट असैसिन एंड इस तरह के मेजर बहुत बड़े इवेंट्स हो रहे थे और बहुत एक हैपनिंग सा सीन था फिल्म इंडस्ट्री का पाकिस्तान का और Uh, इसी तरह से प्रेस भी उतनी ही सपोर्टिव थी पेपर्स में एड आया करते थे और हम मार्क किया करते थे इस वीकेंड पे कौन सी आ रही है अगले महीने कौन सी आने वाली है फिल्मों के नाम बहुत इंटरेस्टिंग हुआ करते थे अगर एक महीने एक फिल्म अनाउंस होती थी निकाह तो फिर हमें पता चलता था कि दो महीने के बाद एक फिल्म अनाउंस होती है जिसका नाम तलाक है तो देर वॉज अ कॉन्वर्सेशन गोइंग ऑन दिस इंटरेस्टिंग यू नो एक्टिविटीज है यू नो सनीता साहिबा फिल्म बना रही हैं फिर उस वक्त सैयद नू साहब बना रहे हैं जावेद शेख बना रहे हैं देन यू नो देवर दीज अदर्स लाहौर बेस्ड प्रोड्यूसर्स आल्सो यू नो कमिंग अप विद ऑल सॉर्ट्स ऑफ फिल्म्स बट व्हाट वी व्हाट वी सॉ लैकिंग बैक देन इवन वाज लेट्स से के आउटडोर मीडिया का इस्तेमाल फिल्मों की प्रमोशन के अंदर में यस अमाउंट्स वर बीइंग स्पेंट ऑन यू नो आउटडोर लोकेशंस एंड यू नो ऑन द क्वालिटी ऑफ द प्रोडक्शन जो भी अपने लिमिटेड मींस के अंदर में जो भी प्राइवेट प्रोड्यूसर्स जो थे वो कर सकते थे या इंडिविजुअल प्रोड्यूसर्स या लेट्स से स्टूडियो सिस्टम तब भी उतना फ्लरिशिंग नहीं था लेकिन दे व्हाट दे लैक्ड मनी इन वाज अगेन यू नो अ प्रॉपर मार्केटिंग कैंपेन जिसमें एज अ फिल्म स्टूडेंट एंड देन यू नो इवेंचुअली थोड़ा बहुत पढ़ाने का मौका मिला एंड देन बाद में वेरी लेटर ऑन प्रैक्टिस करने का मौका मिला एंड वी कैन टू रियलाइज के सम टाइम्स एज बिग एज लेट्स से 70% ऑफ द बजट ऑफ द फिल्म्स आर डेडिकेटेड टू द मार्केटिंग ऑफ द फिल्म्स एक्चुअली यू नो तो so, वो वाला तो हमने कभी नहीं शायद टाइम पीरियड देखा कि जहाँ के अंदर में एक प्रोड्यूसर बैठकर के अगर फिल्म डिजाइन कर लेता है बना लेता है तो फिर एक कंपनी उसको बैक करती है उसकी मार्केटिंग स्ट्रेटेजीज को डिजाइन करने के लिए और फिर उसकी प्रमोशन के लिए उनके पास में इतने सारे आउटलेट्स या इतने सारे प्लेटफॉर्म्स होते हैं सो so, एक जिसको आप बोलते हैं कि कंगलॉमरेट बन जाता है जिसके अंदर में वन इंडस्ट्री सपोर्ट्स दी अदर इंडस्ट्री और वन मीडियम सपोर्ट्स दी अदर मीडियम दैट नेटवर्क वॉज नेवर दैर एज पर माई लिमिटेड ऑप्शन आई वुड से एंड फिर ऐसा ऐसा करके ऑफ कोर्स ड्यू टू लिमिटेड सब्जेक्ट एंड यू नो हमारे यहाँ बहुत सारी डिबेट जो है वो अराउंड द लैंग्वेज ऑफ द फिल्म ही रहेगी कि ये उर्दू फिल्म है फिल्म वो नॉट लेट से कैटेगराइज अपॉन देयर यॉन्ट्रस बट अकॉर्डिंग टू वट लैंग्वेज देवर मेड इन उर्दू 
हिंदी फिल्में बनती थी और पंजाबी फिल्में बनती थी और उनकी आपस में सेल्फ कॉम्पिटिशन हुआ करती थी एंड देन मोस्ट ऑफ देम वर यू नो इन देयर स्टाइल एंड देन ट्रीटमेंट ओवर लेट्स से सम ऑफ देम लेट्स से मोस्ट ऑफ देम अगर मैं ना भी कहूं तो बट रिप ऑफ ऑफ लेट्स से सम इंटरनेशनल फिल्म्स एंड देन यू नो सम ऑफ द इंडियन फिल्म्स आल्सो सो म्यूजिक जो था जहां पे फ्लरिश भी करता था बट देन अगेन यू नो हमने अपने फिल्मों के बूमिंग पीरियड के अंदर में भी देखा है कि हमारे जो गाने हुआ करते थे फ्रॉम लेट्स से द लीडिंग सिंगर्स आल्सो वी यूज्ड टू बी you know uh, rip offs of some popular songs from across the border and then you know kuch international melodies wagaira ko lekar ke ab again hamari film mein competitive ho sakti hai ki jahan ke andar mein ek industry dusri industry ke back to par mile let alone ke ek industry ka individual dusri industry ke individual ki back to par mein khada hua hai so again expecting ke aur wapas ye to bhi industry bhi nahi bani hai it is again very much of an indie scene uh, indie cinema scene ke jahan ke par mein koi ek producer badi mushkil se अपनी कोई सेविंग्स uh, को लगा करके या दोस्तों के फेवर्स दे करके या किसी से कोई स्पॉन्सरशिप अमाउंट इकट्ठी करके कॉपरेट्स वगैरह में से लेकर के एक फिल्म बना देते हैं तो अभी तो ये इंडस्ट्री भी नहीं है तो हम उसके अंदर में कैसे सोच सकते हैं कि हम इस्टेब्लिश एंड थ्राइविंग इंडस्ट्रीज के साथ में जिनकी डेकेड की जो है वो हिस्ट्रीज uh, हैं फ्लरिशिंग uh, की सिनेमाज की uh unko hum compete kar sakte hain so i would say not in terms of the quality of narratives that we are producing yes technology jahan pe jahan evolve karke chali gayi hai usme i'm sure pakistan ka kisi bhi ek individual ya kisi ek industry ka bhi haath nahi hai telling me natural progress hi jo ho gayi are you telling me kamal bibi ke aap apne movies mein se paise nahi bana rahe matlab ye jo for example sarman ne movie banayi thi manto jo mujhe yaad hai it did not make money because it seemed to do well it is actually you know uh, quite uh, quite fortunately i would say ki jitne paise us film mein lagaye gaye the us uh, serial mein lagaye gaye the wo film se recover ho gaye the and that is why hamare yahan to spin off ka bhi concept nahi hai fir unhone baad mein just do it the program was supposed to be syndicated to two channels which it did get eventually jio and then ptv but then again you know uh, they just through the baad mein jo eventual jo serial tha wo uske edit wagaira ke upar mein they did not uh, pay as much attention as they were supposed to Uh, yes it did make money but then manto is one of the exceptions i would say mehreen what about you did uh, are you making money off your movies or not uh, sir mehreen hasn't joined so far sir yes sir mat sahab are you back or not ji ji i am i am i'm, I'm really sorry bahut sare apologies meri taraf se sabse pehle tell us tell us are you making money from movies or are you working in habib bank and making movies <laughs> <laughs> नहीं जी आई थिंक बहुत इधर दीगर लोग जो आई थिंक उसके फाइनेंस को या उसके कॉमर्स एंगल को बेहतर समझते हैं वो भी बैठे हुए हैं मगर मेरे uh, नाकस और थोड़े महदूद इल्म के मुताबिक प्रोड्यूसर को अभी भी हमारे यहाँ उस तरह से पैसा नहीं आता वापस uh, जो पूरी एक फूड चेन बनती है जिसमें सबसे पहले प्रोड्यूसर होता है इन्वेस्टमेंट के मामले में फिर उसके बाद डिस्ट्रीब्यूटर एंड आता है फिर उसके बाद एग्जिबिटर एंड आता है तो अभी भी जब हम फ्लॉन्ट कर रहे होते हैं नंबर्स आई थिंक इट इज जस्ट अ मार्केटिंग गिमिक एंड मोस्टली जो बड़ी फिल्में होती हैं उनमें बड़ा पैसा लगा होता है शोर sure, उनकी रिकवरी शायद ब्रांड एंडोर्समेंट या छोटी मोटी प्लेसमेंट से हो जाती है बट द ग्राउंड रियालिटी ऑल्सो बींग दैट इट्स नॉट ह्यूज अमाउंट ऑफ मनी दैट इवन द कॉपरेट सपोर्ट इंड आई मीन दे डू समाइम्स बट सो इन टर्म्स ऑफ से द रिटर्न फ्रॉम द बॉक्स ऑफिस और फ्रॉम द सिनेमा हाउसेज आई डोंट थिंक एनी फिल्म हैज बिन एबल टू डिपेंड ऑन इट एंटायरली और बहुत सारे लोग इसीलिए मेरा ख्याल है वो इधर दे हैव टू जस्ट सकम टू द आइडिया ऑफ बीइंग एसोसिएटेड और बीइंग फंडेड बाय अ बिग प्रोडक्शन हाउस एंड फॉर द लास्ट फ्यू इयर्स दैट हैज टू बी वन ऑफ द टीवी चैनल्स व्हिच आर नाउ द मेन मूवी प्रोड्यूसिंग चैनल्स आल्सो एंड दैट कम्स विद से अ होल सेट ऑफ प्रीसेट्स और रिक्वायरमेंट्स इन टर्म्स ऑफ से व्हाट यू ऑनरा व्हाट काइंड ऑफ कास्टिंग व्हाट mode of storytelling and 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 a lot of other sort of you know formula driven uh constraints that i would like to call it but as it comes to say uh, what what gabul was talking about manto manto was made with a very small budget and i think that was perhaps a trick or a model that had to be followed later it was a not meant to be a movie initially it was more like a distillation out of a, a tv project and hence the stakes were really small and ratio wise uh, geo did manage to recover uh, you know at least the investment back and it was a two fold project where there was a tv project which came out of the uh, the initial project was the uh, tv project so some money came back from the telecast uh, rights also so having said that right now no 
uh, I would like to, I mean, I did get, uh, hear the question when you said that, you know, what is holding us back uh, from uh, telling our stories or competing with the world? I think nothing or no one is supporting us, actually. When we talk about industry, it's not about individuals. It cannot be just my film or somebody else's two films that can take the whole, say, the mood or the uh, the direction in a, in a certain way. It has to be then when an industry is operating as an industry, then they need need to be sort of, you know, a more elaborate sense of structure to it, a more elaborate sense of integrity and some kind of a design, you know, which is completely lacking. And I think it's such a broken record that we keep saying that there's no support from the government, which is just true. And I would just end it there. I think it's hardly debatable anymore. We know uh, how that has been for the past many, many sort of, uh, tenures of several kinds of uh, governments here. Uh, that has never happened. Uh, whenever even, you know, we talk about the golden era or the golden age of Pakistani cinema, I think it was just thriving pretty much on its own uh, through a certain cycle of commerce. And hence they had to uh, stick to a very formula driven storytelling. And uh, I think as much as one would like to glorify the past, I think our film industry was pretty much stagnant even in its boom in terms of say diversity of narrative styles, aesthetic styles. Our music was flourishing, I think always there has been like a golden age of film music here, but I don't know. I mean, if I were to just throw a question to all of us right now, I don't know if, if all of us would be able to give us, uh, give each other like 10 favorite Pakistani films. We have not watched enough Pakistani cinema. I'm 41. I don't have 10 favorite Pakistani films. So right now, I think it is a very indie scene where uh, some people are trying to make money or trying to say, and, and most of the money then also comes through, say, smaller sort of, you know, uh, pockets like selling di digital rights or television rights and things. But as an industry or as a, as a commercially viable business, I don't think it even stands on one leg at the moment, let alone, you know, it needs to stand sturdy on two good legs. Uh, it doesn't. It is a very individual effort in small pockets. Even the big TV channels, for example, I don't know if any one of them is producing more than two films a year. And with that kind of quantity and a ban of Indian cinema, which uh, uh, I mean, just unluckily so, I mean, because there's so much politics around it, uh, that was kind of taking care of putting enough people on the seats for a long, long time. And somehow our films did drive some crowds in, but a lot of our films only survived on the spillover of the, the Bollywood cinema that was being shown. And I am sure even if a film like Manto, for example, there was a dedicated audience, but it was really small. So it did have a lot of spillover of whatever was happening around it. So right now, I don't want to sound too pessimistic, but uh, in, in, in the sense that, you know, if there is a sense of direction, if there is a sense of a plan, I don't think anyone has it. Okay. Uh, nobody let's does. Bring in, let's bring in Harvard now. Uh, Saad, you returned from Harvard to intervene in the film industry. And you put your money where your mouth is. So please tell me, why did you put your money here? And what promise do you see in the film industry? And what has happened um, for you? Has it made you more despondent? Are you more uh, optimistic? Do you see the film industry flourishing? And what is this, this, this I hear that there are no networks, there are no financing arrangements, there's really, I mean, it seems to me it's like an amateur outfit where some people are doing things for their own pleasure or fun, but there doesn't seem to be a, a vibrant professional culture there. Saad, am I wrong? Go ahead. Saad. Well, thanks, Madeem. Mm -hmm. I guess uh, there'll be a bit of an echo. I am traveling today, so I'm using yeah. the place to actually set up. So. I apologize, the internet keeps coming in and out. So let me walk you through the whole, I've listened to everyone now, mm -hmm. and if I have about 10 minutes, I can walk you through. Mm -hmm. So to answer your first question, I think um, Harvard didn't teach me to operate in Pakistan. Mm -hmm. I should have just made housing societies. I think I would have done much better. I have an engineering company, I have a consulting, uh, I have a construction company, and building houses would have made me financially much better off than building cinemas. Mm -hmm. um, so let me tell you where we started off from. Um, mm -hmm. You know, when I got back uh, with General Musharraf's regime, and we went and showed him some charts, and 
you know, you play, try and make some presentations and stuff like that. And the government has always tried to help, but I'll tell you where the problem is. Um, so we had about 1150 streams in Pakistan in 1965. But this is only West Pakistan. I'm not talking about East Pakistan. Hmm. Um, when we got into this business, there were 25. Right. So you can do the math. We had lost about 98% of our film industry. We used to produce about 150 films a year. Hmm. We were the fifth largest film industry in the world, hmm. sometimes even third. And we were down to zero Urdu films. Hmm. Um, in 2015, if you looked at the top searches from Google from Pakistan, um, <clears throat> the first was for YouTube, mm -hmm. but the next four were for Indian films. Mm -hmm. Now, what was it that we succeeded in doing? We banned Indian films in 1965, mm -hmm. and we destroyed our own industry. Two generations of Pakistani missed out on Indian films. I remember in the 80s and 90s, the only movie stars we could think of was Indian movie stars. So I honestly think if somebody had actually devised a plan to destroy the Pakistani uh, film industry, they couldn't have done a better job than what our government did back in 1965. Mm -hmm. So I think we kind of destroyed it. I think Sherry Rahman was very, very helpful. Um, General Musharraf took the lead forward. In 2005, um, and if I send you this, you know, when I did my due diligence, I took some slides and I took some pictures of the cinemas, the women's bathroom used to be boarded up mm. because no women used to go there. Mm. And nobody would want to step into those cinemas uh, at all. Mm. So the state of Pakistan, and I don't say General Musharraf, right? the state of Pakistan made a commitment to us that they would open up Indian films. And based on that business model, we should invest. So our company has invested about 7 billion rupees into this sector, of which we raised, I would say, about three and a half, three, three and a half billion rupees from foreign investors um, from all over the world, the US, you know, UAE. We, we went around and we raised money from private equity and stuff like that. Um, to date, other than my salary, I have never taken a single dime out of us in our business because we were going through a very fast pace. We were pretty much in the initial years doubling our size. And then we were growing at about 60, 70% top line for the past three, four years. Um, so it's all come to a stop. In 2018, we had an incident with India and uh, we shut down Indian films. This is before Kashmir. This is Pulwana incidents with that happened. Social media put a lot of pressure on the government. Um, and the government, before they took out a notification, we worked in partnership with them to shut down uh, Indian content because once government brings out a notification, it's very difficult to reverse it. And then when the Kashmir issue took place, then everything from India is done. Hmm. So we fired about 800 people since then. Uh, we, well, you talked about bringing professionalism into the sector. Well, you know, we used to send our people for training all over the world. Our CEO was a woman who had worked in five different countries, including Argentina, England, Singapore, Australia, Vietnam. Um, she was running, and Malaysia, six. Mm -hmm. So she was running a 200 chain. Uh, she was the chief operating officer mm -hmm. of a 200 screen cinema chain in Malaysia. We convinced her to move to Pakistan mm -hmm. two years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, and she became our CEO. She just left about four months ago because it doesn't make sense to keep her there anymore. Um, so along with that, let's go through the entire cycle, right? So everyone keeps telling us that just because there's very few cinema owners, we are the people who dominate the sector. Mm. But, you know, you had to, we had to set up distribution first because if you didn't have content, you couldn't have uh, cinemas. Mm. So what we did was we actually signed up and we represent Universal, Paramount, Disney, Fox, all the big studios, uh, here, because we need about 200 films to run every year. Hmm. The maximum films that Pakistan has given us ever was 29. Hmm. Now, you know, I love hearing people say that, you know, they make a lot of effort to make movies. And I really appreciate that because every one of us is an entrepreneur and artists put in their blood and soil. Hmm. But the point of the matter is that not all films do well, hmm. right? That's just the 
basic, basic chunks of it. Uh, the basic, I mean, bottom line. For example, every time I run a movie in one of my multiplexes, it costs me 28,000 rupees. But that does not mean that I will get 28,000 rupees worth of customers in there, right? Mm -hmm. I'll give you an example that out of the, and I can give you the exact number, that there were about 21 Pakistani films released, mm -hmm. of which I lost money on about 17 of those Pakistani movies. Mm -hmm. I mean, I actually lost money. Mm -hmm. And running those films. In the Western world, if the movies are bad, people don't even run those films, right? We wanted to promote the Pakistani uh, film industry. So the Indian film content gave us the financial breadth to actually help a lot of... We used to run every Pakistani film. There was no Pakistani film we did not run. But at the other side, what we had was our ticket prices went up 43%. And I'm giving you this example uh, of Jinnah Park, where we opened up in 2005. That was the first investment in a Pakistani cinema. It cost us $3 million, $4 million at that time. Um, it was the first movie cinema built after the 1970s in Pakistan. The ticket prices there went up 43% over the past 15 years. Guess how much the electricity prices have gone up? My electricity bill has gone up 568%. My rent has increased 350%. The dollar has increased 154%. Mm. And I still offer student tickets for 199 rupees there as well. Mm. So it's not that the economics of this business are there at all. There was some uh, question you raised about the government. And I, Kamran Bhai mentioned it as well. Mm. There are 17 NOCs I require from different government organizations. Mm. So I'll give you an example. Mm. Uh, in uh, Gujranwala, I have a three-screen multiplex. The whole mall was working. Mm. But I needed to go, once the mall was working, I needed to get an NOC from 17 different government organizations. And I need to have that license renewed every year. So every so year, the government, 17 NOCs? 17. I have to go to the DC office. The DC office writes to about up to about 17 places, and I can name a lot of them for you. The Environmental Department, the uh, Civil Defense Department, the Special Branch of the Police, the SP Police Security, the Health Department, the Electricity, the Building Control. I can give you the name. And I can Every year this has to happen. Every year. It's not the first time only. My license issued by the uh, District Commissioner is for one year. Now, let's take a film, right? So what have we done? Um, as an industry, I was paying corporate tax. I have paid half a billion rupees of taxes in the last three years between 2015 and 2018. It's half a billion rupees. Um, this includes sale tax, this includes import duties. I'm just saying what we contributed to the government coffers was half a billion rupees, over 50 crore rupees in three years. But at the same time, what did we see? Mm. Uh, the government has banned films. Mm. The government has um, mm. basically, today, a film can run on YouTube, mm. Netflix. Mm. Any forum that you want to use, uh, any forum whatsoever. Mm. But the problem is that mm. you can't run it in the cinema. Mm. So you can watch it on torrents, you mm. can watch it on mm. YouTube, you can do anything you want. But the only place that pays you tax, it's no mm. longer available, right? Mm. So that has happened. But on the flip side, I can also tell you this. Our films had started becoming international. Mm. If you think about it, there was a movie called Janan. And this is why we have always been very supported by the government, mm. as well as um, ISPR and every other organization in Pakistan. Mm. Because Janan went to England and they made about 500,000 uh, pounds. But the most interesting thing was that the diaspora does, the, only the diaspora housewives actually watch Pakistani dramas. But a film is a three hour medium, two hour medium. Anyone and everyone goes to see it. So Pakistani students were taking Indian students, you know, some Chinese students, some American kids with them, and they'd go see a movie. And the comments and the so on not only social media, but local newspapers was. Hmm. 
Hello, you're losing you. Let me take it one, one step more forward. Hmm. Uh, I think by closing off Indian competition, uh, we've closed up, uh, uh, what do you call, basic essence of our lifeline. We will not be able to make good Pakistani films. Since February 2019, we have not actually made money on a single Indian film as a cinema. We are the largest cinema owners of Pakistan. Hmm. I have not made a single rupee uh, of profit on any Pakistani film whatsoever. While before that, the people want to see Pakistani films. Now, if you ask me, which is the most successful Pakistani films I've run, they've actually been Pakistani films. Punjab Me Jaungi, Namalum Afrad, Khuda Ke Liye Waad, which was Kamran Sang, Jawani Pirmiyani, because we are an understream market. Bangkok alone has more streams than us, right? So it is the number of weeks one of our films runs. Mm-hmm. And we ran Punjab Ni Jangi for 37 weeks, mm-hmm. which is unbelievable. The top five films in Pakistan, in terms of length of run, mm-hmm. which is the one yardstick of success, have all been Pakistani films. Mm-hmm. And those films have done phenomenally well, and the producers are very happy. Mm-hmm. Now, the problem one, the last thing I want to address, because I've gone off, and I was been trying to address all the questions that you raised. Mm. So I wanted to make sure that we uh, did that. Mm. So the two things I would like you to know mm. that, you know, one of, in 2004, 2005, mm. uh, there was this film uh, about Pakistan, India friendship, I'm forgetting the name. That made $7 million. Mm. Punjab Ni Jaungi mm. at 100 rupees to a dollar made $7 million. And that was their worldwide collection. Mm. So the mm. potential was there for us to get to that point. And, you know, Pakistan is better than Indian films. Mm. And the last thing I'd like to say is, as an industry, I think we all work together well, where there was money to be made for everyone. Mm. And it doesn't matter which government came in. I've been in this business from 2015. Mm. Uh, each government has tried to support us. Mm. Every other organization has tried to support us. Um, today, if somebody makes a film, and you were asking why doesn't Engro or Mia Mancha invest in the film, mm. uh, they actually can, and their profits from a film is uh, 100% tax-free. The mm. government passed this in 2018 under the new film policy. Mm. So anyone who invests in a Pakistani movie, all the profits are tax-free. So it's a great incentive for, uh, we lobbied with the government, the government supported us, they came out with the film policy. But the problem is we live in a very complicated uh, country where there are a lot of pressures and a lot of exogenous pressures which don't allow us to continue to function. Sarman sir, uh, let me turn to you then. Joe Bataya Abhi Bisne Apna Sadne. I think agar is tax free aapko financing mil rahi hai agar aapke paas screens bhi ab farakh pari padi hain aur demand bhi hai market mein what is holding you back why can't you make the professional networks that are necessary i believe mai kamran sahab pe bhi is pe aata hu i believe of course main jo i'm just a watcher i don't know enough but film making is a very complex task with a huge number of people involved so is it so why is it so individualistic still? Is it because we set mentality or is it something else? These are okay, again, I mean, as much as I agree with most of what uh Pishab just said, I do feel that you know, just saying the government has made a policy where it's tax-free, it doesn't just come as oh, now there's a policy and it's accessible and everybody will have the knowledge of how it operates. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, As you said, that films are literally made with an army and a half. Mm -hmm. A film takes like years to make. Uh, Sure, there is commercial cinema, which makes money, but then there is uh, a side to it, which I don't know. I mean, the whole uh, fiasco that went around my film I don't know, that's something which I wasn't ready for. Mm -hmm. I don't think anybody is ready for that, where you have invested money, where you're ready for a release, irrespective of, say, the genre or the outreach. But uh, 
No, it, it, it sort of, you know, just having, say, a policy in place does not ensure that it will have practical implementations and it will also ensure that there would be enough work produced. Could it also and, be that uh, uh, our film industry is full of idealists? Jo Peer ne abhi baat ki hai, Saad ne, ke ji, apna Punjab nahi jaungi. Now that's a movie I saw as well. I see very few movies. Hmm. That's a movie I saw too and I enjoyed it. Movie without a message with nothing, just a fun movie. I think but Pakistan some problems, some big problems, I feel. Mm -hmm. But fair enough. And but point yeah. is, it was. Narrative problems. I feel it had a lot of problems in it, sure. Okay, go ahead. Hmm. So, oh, how Samad, sorry, sorry to cut in, Nadeem, if I can just take a second with Samadhi. Hmm. The problem is that we all want to do things in one year. Hmm. There is an evolution of everything, every industry. <coughs> industry did not get bored in Pakistan and take over 60% exports on day one, right? Everything has a life cycle. What is the life cycle of films? And I apologize if I'm stepping into your domain, um, and I have a tremendous amount of respect for what you do. Uh, the thing is, VK, you need a certain amount of scale. So commercially successful films like we don't have a horror genre in Pakistan. Mm. Right now, the only thing that sells in Pakistan mm. is a rom-com. Everyone wants to go see a light right. Agree, Agreed, agreed, uh, agreed. Because it gives them three hours of release from load shedding, no nagging, nothing. They go there and they sit and they're transported into another world. Mm. It seems to work. Mm. But what would be the next step to that? You'd have horror films. You'd have a, a development of a whole art scene. For me, the best film I've seen, and you, because you're sitting here, Samad, I won't go towards that side. But, uh, you know, like there's this guy called, uh, what's his name? He made Shah about this boxer. Another right, phenomenon. Right, yeah. He made Motorcycle Girl. We invested in that film with him. We didn't make money, but we invested money with him on that film. And that is a niche film again, right? Shah was a niche film. Mm -hmm. But again, this is an evolution of cinema. On day mm -hmm. one, you sell to the public. Cinema going is a habit. People get into the habit of going every weekend and stuff. So you keep adding genres as you go along. People right, write right. Down, make two films a year. They'll go to five films a year. But Pisa, that's Sorry. where the problem is. I think that is what I'm hinting at, that just, again, we cannot go in a reverse gear and a myopia of sorts where we say only this genre sells. And hence the reluctant financiers or people who are willing to put their money in, they would just not invest in any other genre at all. Nobody wants to. Mm -hmm. Like if you were to take, and why I'm saying that there are problems with films or narratives, because I feel that that whole hangover of the sensibility of 80s Bollywood, which we storytellers or filmmakers are then accused of, that why aren't we at par with international cinema? Why aren't we at par with the kind of content, say, that our neighboring country is putting out? Like, not only on digital, but everywhere in the world, you know. So, mm -hmm. only because the, the commerce angle is there, I agree there needs to be a sufficient supply to make, ensure that, you know, the money keeps rolling back in. But that cannot result in a complete absence of diversity. Because I feel that that is what caused the demise or whatever a total collapse of uh, the cinema industry towards the 90s and the early 2000s. And we've seen such dry years of cinema. So right now, when I see just one kind of genre and people kind of validating that, oh, this is what needs to be just repeated over and over again, I feel scared. And then the burden that I take as a storyteller is not shared by anyone, you know? Then it's like a bad film at the end of the day if it doesn't make money. Like you praising Shah, I mean, warms my heart because I feel that that kind of a cozy, uh, personal take on a story like that is very, very important. Mm -hmm. And whereas the Punjab Nehi Jaungi ensures money, there is no support for five more shahs to be made, out of which perhaps three would work. Yeah, and that, they are much smaller yeah. in budget. Uh, but Salman, okay. that's the story of the world. But let me go to Kamran. Kamran Lashari. Kamran sir, uh, uh, Nadeem, if you allow me to just take 30 seconds, I want you to address two things. And one is to Nadeem as well. Uh, Salman, the thing is, when you have enough cinemas being built, like, um, we have a multiplex in packages. It is 10 screens. You have enough, you have enough breadth now to show different genres. Exactly. We're a number screen market. So commercial success was going to drive it. 
but we built 10 screens so we can get different genres running at the same time. And secondly, yeah, they go, I'll give you, I'm just a technical professional, right? I'll give you two quotes right now. One is by Taran Adarsh, who's a huge Indian film critic, right? Yeah. yeah he said, yeah. Bold is a brilliant film embellished with bravura. Bold took the Indian subcontinent by storm, right? right. What did Ram Gopal Varma say? He said, so var, stunned beyond belief. I just want to leave direction and go to assist Bilal Lishadi. Indian film should look at Pakistan films seriously. This is Ram Gopal Verma, who's considered one of the icons of the Indian film, right? And, you know, Kamran is here. Look at the words they were using. Kamran. That's why I want to ask Kamran. Kamran, can you tell us your experience about war? Number eight, uh, did you make money? How long did it take? Was it easy? Uh, uh, the producer was uh, someone else. Hmm. Uh, my son was the director mm -hmm. and uh, this movie, uh, I mean, I got various uh, numbers. I wouldn't have exact number, but it was, of course, uh, a movie which was, um, which was a bit uh, heavy on budget. Mm -hmm. And even when it made, I don't know, I think 25 or 30 crore, Mm -hmm. So, uh, what happens is half the money, logo ko optics is ke mukhtalif hai, you know. Mm -hmm. They think ki achcha bhi ek producer ne film banai thi, aur dekho wo usne 25 crore bana liye. Mm -hmm. Hota ye hai ki aadhe paise to, they go to the cinema straight away. Mm -hmm. Achcha. Uh, let's suppose, agar 24 crore uh, aapne banai box office se, to 12 crore cinema, of course, they, utki apni property hai, aur ye us, uh, milke chalta hai. Mm -hmm. Aur koi, 15% hai, wo chala jata hai to the marketing side also. Mm -hmm. So, ab aapne, jo aapko mila, wo koi 10 crore mila. Aur agar aapne wo, jo ke 24 crore, uh, roz roz itni koi film nahi karti Pakistan. To, so, so, the producer gets, uh, you know, barely, even if it's a very successful movie, um, close to his investment or maybe sometimes to make some money. But uh, the point is, uh, making a quality movie in Pakistan is not very feasible. Mm. Now that my son is, you know, into the direction of this movie, for which I've seen him burning the midnight oil for the last five years, that is Mola, uh, the legend of Mola Jat. Much awaited Mola Jat. Take Abab, inshallah, it will do pretty well. But at the same time, I have in projects paper. इस तरह काम होते नहीं देखा एंड आई कैन इमेजिन अगर इससे आधा भी कोई काम करता है तो वो बहुत बड़ा काम करता है क्योंकि मेकिंग अ मूवी हम दूर बैठे सिर्फ फिल्म देखते थे समझते थे कि ये इट्स अ वेरी वेरी और खास तौर पे इफ यू आर वांटिंग अ क्वालिटी मूवी और गोइंग टू परफेक्शन अच्छी चीज ये हुई है नदीम साहब मेरे ख्याल से कि अब एक नई क्रॉप ऑफ सिनेमा ओनर्स एंड फिल्म प्रोड्यूसर्स हैव कम इन एंड डायरेक्टर्स वो जो एक गुजर बरादरी ने मोनोपोलाइज किया हुआ था और बिल्कुल एक मैं समझता हूं दैट चीपेंड द इंडस्ट्री एट वन स्टेज एंड ब्रॉट इट डाउन और मजाक बन गया था हमारी फिल्मों का अब अब देखिए जो साद ने बड़ी अच्छी बातें की हैं दोनों साइड ऑफ द पिक्चर बताई हैं तो एक एक अच्छी बात यह हुई है कि हमारी फिल्म में इंडिया में बाहर के मुल्कों में कामयाब हुई हैं चाहे थोड़े नंबर में हुई हैं लेकिन जितनी भी हैं और इंडिया की भी हर फिल्म कामयाब नहीं होती बेशुमार फिल्में यहां हमारे सिनेमा में लगी और उसके साथ-साथ हमारी अपनी फिल्म लगी और वो ज्यादा कामयाब रही सो वी शुड एनकरेज आवर दीस यंगस्टर्स दे आर द बेस्ट होप दे हैव ब्रॉट इन न्यू ये सरमद फैमिली एंड अदर आई साथ ये सारे यंगर न्यू पीपल न्यू विजन न्यू थिंकिंग और इनको अगर थोड़ी सी कुछ फिजिबिलिटी बेहतर हो जाए आपस में बैठ के सिनेमा ओनर्स प्रोड्यूसर्स एंड मार्केटर्स जिससे देयर शुड बी अ कंसेंसस और गवर्नमेंट से भी बात हो कि भाई ये अब तो और जिस टाइम पे आप ये प्रोग्राम कर रहे हैं आई थिंक दिस इज द वर्स्ट टाइम्स फॉर द सिनेमा इंडस्ट्री अब जो रही से एक असर थी वो कोरोना ने खत्म कर दी है अब तो सिनेमाज है ही नहीं और अब होंगे भी तो वो कहते हैं अच्छा जी चार सीट्स जो हैं आप हट कर बैठे और बिल फर्ज आज अगर मौला जट फिल्म रिलीज हो जाती है 
तो मैं तो ये सोच रहा था कि अगर उस पर बॉक्स ऑफिस पे ज्यादा लोग आएंगे तो ज्यादा मसला बन जाएगा उस सोशल मीडिया ने दूसरे कहा लो जी देखो जी ये हो रहा है सीन जरा देखिए लोग साथ साथ वो और उसी दिन कोई ना कोई एनओसी देने वाला उसको एनओसी बंद कर देगा और वो सिनेमा वो फिल्म उतरी रह जाएगी सो दिस इज कंट्री ऑफ एन बंदिशों की मारी हुई और रुकावटों की और You are a civil servant, a well-known, famous civil servant. <laughs> what is this NOC regime? Why can't you kill it? Uh, sorry, once again, what, what what can't I kill it? Once again, you are a famous civil servant, mashallah. You did every position. Yeah. You've done very one of the most dynamic ones we've done. Right? Dynamic, well-regarded. मुझे बताएं ये परमेशन इकोनॉमी अगर आपके जैसे लोग बंद नहीं कर सके एनओसी इकोनॉमी नहीं दी ये 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 जो है ना एक ऐसा कल्चर है जिसको ये क्या टूरिज्म की बात करते हैं टूरिज्म का मतलब तो होता है आजादी इधर सबसे पहले तो उसको सेल्फ किया जाता है आप, आप ना कुछ पहन सकते हैं ना खा सकते हैं ना कोई आप पी सकते हैं ना कोई तो ये कहा अभी मैं कश्मीर से होकर आ रहा हूँ चार जगह पे मैंने अपना शनाख्ती कार्ड दिखाना पड़ा है मुझे एक डंडा बीच में लगा देते हैं एंड एंड देन यू कीप यू नो बिकॉज ये एक्चुअली Uh, हम ये बैरियर्स हैं थ्रू विच वी आर लिविंग इन दिस कंट्री और वो हमारे जहन में है अब ये करतारपुर का सक्सेस जो है वट है वट है डन वी जस्ट रिमूव वन बैरियर जो खुद ही लगाया हुआ था तो सो दो वी नीड टू रिमूव द बैरियर्स और वो जो है हमारा डिपार्टमेंट वो अपनी किंगडम अपनी स्पेस को छोड़ने के लिए तैयार ही नहीं है आज भी अगर एक कवाली करानी है ना आपने इन फाइव स्टार होटल you need two nocs hmm. one is from the excise department one is from the deputy commissioner agar aapne pc hotel lahore mein bhi uh, this is strange wo noc par kahan se kaise jata hai kya kya usme hota hai to ye main to hukumat se kafi aur when i was dc lahore main isko khatam karne laga tha mujhe koi logic samajh mein nahi aati thi but one time i regret and i couldn't do it meri apni team ne kaha sir ho gaye dc ya kal kuch nahi reya the abhi khatam kar diyo gaye the ki acha so anyways then when i became chief commissioner islamabad hmm. i had that in the back of my mind or many of exercise i had the uh, authority or powers so hmm. aaj agar wahan drama karte hain to stage show karte hain in islamabad there is no exercise over there i i, I could manage so so but like in generally no no i i walked up to the exercise secretary twice and i said yaar ये एंटरटेनमेंट टैक्स जो लगाया हुआ है ड्यूटी लगाई हुई है एक बच्चे से प्ले करते हैं कोई क्या जरूरत है इसकी और कितना साल में कोई एक करोड़ पता नहीं कितने लाख जमा होता है व्हाट इज करोड़ और टू करोड़ रुपीस लेकिन डिपार्टमेंट्स आर नॉट रेडी टू कॉम्प्रोमाइज विद दैट कमल कैन आई कम बैक टू यू एंड आस्क यू वेरी सिंपली के जी ये जो हमारी मूवी इंडस्ट्री में लैक ऑफ प्रोफेशनलिज्म एंड फॉरेस्ट ऑफिस दैट आई लाइक आई लाइक यू टू कमेंट ऑन इट के I think ये जो बात हो रही है कि takes an army and probably more than an army. I mean, I quite frankly when I see the मैं कई दफा movies में खड़े हो के पीछे वो देखता हूँ the number of people who made the movie and it's quite amazing के really it takes an army to make a movie and then there are number of different firms involved from CGI to this to that etc. Do we have enough skills in that industry? Is it just based on old families and just a few people who just you know trying to keep their interest alive ye kya amateur industry hai ya professional ban chuki hai kamal bibi ye sir i think kamal has left due to uh, mobile issue i think so theek hai sarmad sarmad hai ki nahi ji sir sir he is here sir why don't you answer that i am very much here sir go ahead answer that question sir so, uh yes and no because i think in order for a uh, that kind of a constant supply of young blood or like newer people to the thing you need to have that uh, sort of institutional support and it's been only i think just over a decade that you know even when we have realized that this is a discipline that needs to be taught and people need to be trained in it mm-hmm. and to be honest i like perhaps national college of the arts is is the oldest now in terms of the film department and they, that they have and it's not more than a decade or a Mm-hmm. at tops like a uh, half ago and there are very few colleges which are sort of you know there are film grads coming out people who are talented people who are interested but also people who are really lost in terms of opportunities uh 
I would speak for myself that in the in the past four and a half years, I set up a small company where I think not only because I wanted that fresher perspective to come in, but uh, also because it makes it a little more budget friendly. I encourage a lot of young people to come into it. And there are young people who are talented with the whole digitization of the craft, you know, with the digital technology coming in. I think it has become a little more affordable, a little more accessible. Things are, you know, it is possible to do a lot of things on, say, your computers and through just digital technology. So we do have people. And I think unlike India, uh, I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing, because if you have that kind of, a, you know, that, uh, that, that, uh, legacy being honored and all of that happening, people then put higher stakes in it too. But we don't have it here, to be honest, we don't. Uh, there are some people say who are say like somebody like me, like son of an actor or son of a producer or son of somebody who is already in the same line of work. But I think our majority of uh, uh, professionals are still people who are just coming from other backgrounds and do, do not have that, those kind of links. In terms of talent and potential, no, I do not doubt it by like even a 0%. I think we have it. Uh, the resources uh, in terms of say, just supporting them are very meek. But, uh, but, yeah, but if I one were to even look at support, what do you mean by government support? How can the government support you? I look again, for example, for me, it needed to start with teaching. It needed to start with accepting that this is a discipline that needs to be taught. Like today, if we have, say, good engineers or doctors, or if we have good IT people, I think there is that kind of educational support to it. They did not even admit that this was a discipline worth being taught. It starts there. Secondly, uh, sure, taxes and all of those issues, they do come into the game, but I'll be honest, I think for that, you need like a much more bigger scale of production to happen. Like there are places in, on the same planet where you know films are funded where films are supported where cinema is is like you know somebody there is a there's not just say like a funding body but like some kind of a think tank thinking that what are the narratives that we are putting through our cinema aided with uh, some kind of educational support aided with uh, you know like people who are thought leaders let me, here let we, do, we have direction. nothing let me point you in another direction I think aren't you missing opportunities? Maybe Netflix pe dekh raha tha. Ke hamari jo film hai Netflix pe sirf tera listed hai. Hmm. Hamare drum hai sirf no listed hai. Huh. So I mean, isn't that too little? Are we leaving un uh, arbitrage opportunities here? For example, your movies are not listed on Netflix. Why are you if, not selling your movies? Kamran sahab se bhi hai, war is not listed on Netflix. So there is an unexplored an arbitrary mm. opportunity there. Why are you guys not just, the international opportunity? Just for the sake of confidentiality, if I cannot go into too many details, but from yeah. direct experience, from the horse's mouth right now, that's also like, again, I think when somebody walks up to me and says, why film in Netflix or Amazon? I think it comes with such a, an underline of naivety to it that now I've started laughing at it. It's, it's not as easy as that, as that. trust me. Like, so I've been working with this other platform called Z5, right? Which has just produced some stuff here. And they tell me, and again, from that horse's mouth that even in India, they have like about 600,000 subscribers officially of Netflix. And imagine if that is the kind of number that would bring them and then add the diaspora, which is humongous, that that is why Indian content is out there. They buy most of our stuff mm. at throwaway prices. Mm. And for second or the third runs, when they are done with, say, the airlines and the theatrical releases and all of that, Hamsafar is, is on Netflix. But I know for a fact that Hamsafar was given, as my producer said, out of goodwill. I don't know. I mean, I won't do business out of goodwill, mm. you know. Like, so I'm just saying that people try to do that. And I, I give like sort of, you know, mm -hmm. um, um, whatever credit needs to be given to Hum TV for say giving two of or three of their plays initially. But I've been struggling with it, I'll be honest. And it is again, a very tedious route. You look at their main menu and their main, main menu will only comprise of extremely mainstream stuff. Mm -hmm. And for them, a, a, a market like Pakistan is too minuscule. It is too small. 
And uh, as I said, I, and there was no disrespect or offense intended, but I'm just saying when somebody says, why isn't it on Netflix? I really wanted to say, how about I give you my film? You take it to Netflix, write an email to them. This is a great film, film from Pakistan, or I love this film. And you put it out there, but no, it, it's a very, very tedious. Okay, let's hear from Faris. Faris, what do you say to yes. that? Faris, yeah, Nadeem, 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 Nadeem. let's get that. Nadeem, 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 that's something after that. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. Faris, go ahead first, you then Saad. Go ahead. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I mean, Sarmad is absolutely right. Um, and, uh, it, it's an easy thing to say, why is your film not on Netflix or not on this or not on that? I have my documentaries, which are on Amazon Prime. But that is because my documentaries are commissioned by British channels who then, and then the copyright comes back to me. I can then go to say a, an international distributor like PBS International. And I say, here's a film, a documentary which I have made. Would you be interested in putting it out? And they say, yes. And we work out a, a share of, of, of the royalties. And they then go to various um, channels um, other in other countries and streaming channels like uh, Amazon or Netflix and do a deal with them. It's a complicated and a tedious process. It's not a straightforward process. I have friends who um, make programs for um, uh, Netflix and Amazon and, um, uh, and um, channels like that in India. And they tell me it is a very complicated process also. So it's, uh, it's not that. And also Selmaz is right, that when you say, how should government help you? In Britain, the British film industry uh, has a huge uh, investment from the BFI, the British Film Institute. Mm. The BFI gets money from the government how as much, a grant. How much money? Well, I, I mean, I'm not sure, but it is millions of dollars, not hundreds of, hundreds of millions of dollars. Mm. The, the, uh, the BBC has a film unit. It's, uh, it's drama um, uh, budgets um, for films, not dramas, for films, is also in hundreds of millions. Channel 4 has a cinema uh, unit, film on 4, also hundreds of millions. Mm -hmm. And they go, as some of the same, for diversification. So they hedge their bets. Mm -hmm. So if they make one film which is completely commercial, or five films which are completely commercial, they also make five or six small budget films which are quite on the face of it non-commercial and yet often those non-commercial films do actually better than the so-called commercial films. In films there is no guarantee as Peer Saab has said as to which film will do well and which film will not do well. If we all knew which film would do well we would all be rich producers and billionaires. You know, even Steven Spielberg makes films which lose money. Look, so there is no guarantee on this, it's a, you know, and no, you can't just take this. And final point, final, one final point with me. On training, I've worked all over the world. I'm amazed. I work for Al Jazeera a lot, Al Jazeera English. I go to Doha to edit my films. Technicians there, Pakistan. I was, in, I was shooting in Mecca, in the Haram Sharif. Haram Sharif didn't at those days allow you to take a camera in, but they had 19 cameras fixed with a control room. I, they said you can go into the control room and do whatever you want to do. Who were the uh, uh, producers there, the directors there? Pakistanis. I mean, there, there's no shortage of Pakistani talent. But, you know, it's a question of whether they get a, a reasonable salary or they don't get a reasonable salary. I mean, uh, uh, Sarma and all know what Pakistani channels pay. A, a cameraman or an editor. It's not for me. <laughs> okay. Saad, go ahead. I said, hey, I'm going to address two things which people have been bringing up again about the government support, right? So I'm here to say this to everyone, and I can back this up. Each government since 2005 that I've been in this business, or 2004, has been supported. Are they stuck with their own limitations and some practical realities of the ground? Like I can tell you, these 17 permissions that we used to we need to get every year. The Chief Minister of Punjab once told me, okay, why don't they, we set up a committee and actually get a new law passed? So we we'll, we exist under the 1979 law. When my lawyers started drafting it, they also gave me an advice: you know how to live with this law. 
What if when it goes to parliament and they make something so convoluted that it kills the industry? How are you going to exist with that? So we never took that forward. But in terms of the government support for the film producers, and this is something I personally lobbied for, the government was very supportive. I'll give you eight, ten things which I have personally, I'm reading off a presentation, which I gave the chairman of the Film Producers Association to disseminate with his people. There is a film and drama fund the government has said. It's five billion rupees. There's a 10-year import duty and sales tax waiver on all film and drama equipment. They have, they're going to build three facilities, a film studio, post-production facility, and a film academy, but the film producers need to follow up with this. There's a film directorate which has been allowed in the film uh, Ministry of Information. They are offering um, tax incentives, which I already told you about. There's a 3 billion rupee artist assistant fund, which uh, was a grant of 5 billion. The president of Pakistan uh, disperses it. They've given an income tax holiday on local films and drama productions where the profit made by corporates is going to be allowed there. They've given a tax rebate on exports of Pakistani films for 10 years. They've uh, said that the producers need to come and the government has facilitated how to release a film in China. These are all things that exist. They are on the ground. They're in the 2018 film policy and, what, and the government has implemented a part of them. So then what gives? Um, huh? What gives then? If all these things yeah. are there, you why, know, have had to why are you with If this is available, we should be getting 100 films a year. That is what I'm excited about. Hmm. For me, if we can get 200 films a year in Pakistan, of Pakistani films, my industry will be going like gangbusters. Why is it not? Uh, we will do extremely well because out of those 200 films, about 20 will do really well commercially. There'll be 10, 20 which will do well artistically and it is enough to sustain, give the oxygen to our cinemas to grow. You have to understand the cycle, how it happens. Films come on a big screen. It's an evening out experience. It's a whole visual immersive experience. Then they go to, you know, airlines and other uh, places. Then they go to um, uh, streaming uh, things. Netflix appended that model. But we've had to do a lot of things ourselves. So what we did was we launched Stars Play by Cinefax. It's a streaming video on demand. We've got 1.5 million customers in Pakistan compared to about 600,000 of Netflix. The only thing, and we have... We've, uh, we sponsored the Lahore uh, Children's Film Festival. We've got a hundred movies of those on our thing. We've got Hollywood. We've got everything on it. Uh, we've got Motorcycle Girl there, for example. It couldn't get onto Netflix. So we are extending whatever support we can. But I'll tell you very honestly, Lady, where we stand today, and even with the support of the government, uh, no matter what the government does to support us, without Indian films in the cinema today, cinema as an industry may not survive. Secondly, online will continue to grow. We are very excited about it. That's one of my few businesses that is doing extremely well in this uh, environment right now. And Stars Play is a growth area for us. Uh, we are much larger than Netflix. We are encouraging people. We've got a lot of Amitabh, content. it comes back to you. It comes back to you. Look, I accept what you guys are saying. I accept everything. There's a technological change happening. Uh, streaming is going to be important for the future. Programming is going to be important. It's not just going to be movies. It's going to be serials. There's going to be so many things. Content is changing in many different ways. The distribution is changing in many different ways. But the way I look at it, and this is the fundamental theorem of economics, that business happens in there's upstream, downstream networks that run the business. So you, Sarma Sahib, may produce an act or whatever. That's your job. Somebody else has to do Saad has to show the movies and do the marketing. And somebody else has to do something else. There are so many things that need to happen. The question is, why is, are these things not happening in your industry? Why is the production, etc.? Now, these movie theaters here have even got down to this art to such a form. They can produce a movie in a year. So... I, again, it comes back to the same thing that I've noticed in many industries, from textile to wherever. It's a lack of professionalism everywhere that seems to be one of the major problems. Would you agree, Sarmat sir? I just disagree with the usage of the word. I think it's a very sort of uh, 
not the correct usage of the word industry. I don't feel the industry. I'm in the industry, whatever semblance of it we have. I don't feel the industry. I don't think there is a sense of industry to it. You know, because an industry works with some kind of a collective goal to it, you know, there has to be some kind of a, a irrespective of our whatever small artistic technical or commercial differences There's still and I don't think I feel it. I'll be honest, I think that's where the problem lies that we conveniently use the word industry for it. And I don't think that there is an industry as uh, Pisa was just saying that, you know, he has reached out to the film producers. Uh, association or whatever. I don't know. I'm a part of it. I don't know what the Film Producers Association does. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know where it facilitates. When I was in trouble with my film, I had nobody mm -hmm. uh, represent me. Mm -hmm. I had nobody uh, take the podium or take uh, any kind of stand to say that, oh, this is a censorship issue, not just about one film. This could happen to any other film. There was no sense of, so I, I might be just being too personal and maybe a little petty at the moment by just referring to my own example here. But I don't feel that, you know, if uh, if I feel that way about other films too, just maybe quoting one example. Enough. Right now, how many scripts would you have in your hand that you can market? Let's say if a financier, Saad's partners came along and said, we are willing to finance some movies in Pakistan. How many scripts would you be able to place before them that they can I have look two at films pictures. ready, by the way. It's not yeah, scripts. I have two feature films ready. Sometimes it takes about a decade to make those, right? Yeah. It took me a lifetime. I've done TV all my life. I have two films ready. One got into trouble. The other one's in post-production. I have two films ready. And there are definitely stories brewing, scripts being written. And I'm just not saying, this is what I do for a living. And it's not just me on a personal level. It's me sort of, you know, supporting other people to kind of materialize their Your own. Producers Association, how many films would they be able to put forward to investors today in your Producers Association? In technical terms, I don't know. Film Producers Association does not put any film out. It's producers. I, think I can answer that question for you. Here's, here's what is actually happening. At the peak of the Pakistani film industry in 2017, we had 29 Pakistani films released. Yeah, Since the ban came in, it, and every year that number was increasing. From February to August 2019, they put out 13 films. From August 2019 to February 2020, they put out five films. From August, so from February 2020 to now, we have not put out a single Pakistani film. So if you wanted those numbers, I've given you the exact numbers they can put out. How many scripts are available? Theoretically speaking, we have 72 scripts in the market right now. Mm -hmm. I paid for four. I don't know when I'll get those, but um, I think we are lacking very sorely in the number of films that can hit the streets every year. Mm -hmm. And the constraints are just talent? Just the inability. Yeah, uh, what, yeah, what I, I think some others are better to answer this question. Mm -hmm. I think we are constrained in two places in the value chain of making films. Mm -hmm. One, I think, is script writing, mm -hmm. and the second is uh, directors. We mm -hmm. have tremendous art architect. I mean, uh, artists. We have technicians. We have all those things. Mm -hmm. We d just have not made enough films. So, like today, if you look at um, you know, directors, we could probably count them in both our hands. Writing a good script, because writing a script for a big screen mm. is very different from writing a script for uh, a drama. And you can talk to Hasina Moin, she wrote two scripts for a film, they didn't do well. Mm. You know, so it's a bit different. Kamran Sam, how long did it take to make War and how long has it taken to make Malajat? Unmute yourself, you unmute yourself. Kamran Sam, unmute, unmute. Unmute, okay. Ah, so ahead. when it comes to Bilal, he takes uh, his own time, which which is beyond me, but, but he, mm -hmm. he gets into, some people say perfection, but whatever it means, uh, it took four years to make uh, Navar, and it has taken more than five years to produce and uh, complete the Malajat. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, it, it's just been, been, um, 
you know very painstaking and uh, but i i think uh, movies should be able to be made in two to three years uh, that that should be reasonably good uh, we, i think this is a very well point uh, brought forth by saad that good scripts are hardly there you know mm. and uh, then uh, of course in uh, directors is also an issue but then unless it uh, shows better feasibility some of the feasibility uh, the econ- economics of the movie uh, and and uh, what was being said by sharma that unless they all sit together and work as an industry and not in silos uh, because my feeling is that um, yes everybody takes his own stance so if, if you are a producer you will be taking your own if you are a no actor or if you are a cinema owner mm-hmm. but they all have common stakes and they need to sit together and do some serious thinking how to make it mutually beneficial and uh, mutually profitable mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. fascinating fascinating ji go and ahead. the thing i would just like to add to that that you know i would like to take it back to the that when we think that you know there aren't enough trained screenwriters for example because we didn't train them mm-hmm. right who was teaching people how to write screenplays i mean sure people had a knack for it people had an innate talent for it their legends like hasina moin and and a lot of other people like mustansar sahib and amjad sahib who wrote for tv and all of that but uh, definitely cinema is a much more uh, as i would say that you know it needs to be much more ca- calculated in a as alfred hitchcock said that you need to know the pulse like when you put somebody on that seat then you need to know that pulse you need to know their pulse to the point that you need to know their bladder also in terms of timing right that you know how long a film can be when they can be an intermission or not and all of that we didn't train people and we did not school. facilitate it on any level you know so and i mean there is just a proper film school you need a proper film school exactly. a proper internationally recognized film school with professors and lecturers coming from all over the world you know teaching our young yeah. students this it's a craft it's, yeah you know, teach and, the craft and you know and on a very basic you know, level this like, is a, you know this is what you need you need somebody Who, you know a, a film school which is has links with the professional world which has links with the international world you need to teach them the craft of filmmaking the art to badi bahut badi cheez hai wo aati hai nahi aati hai that's why i might think but get the craft going hmm and i might be sounding like you know it it might sound too bookish or i might be sounding too much like an idealist but that's what i'm saying that when you have just short term results in inside then you're not working on an overall growth of it like if you want more films to be produced there need to be more filmmakers and those filmmakers need to be trained they need to be taught that diversity is not going to come from those 10 filmmakers who are established or who are successful or it it's not going to come from those 11 stars that we have you know i mean it's not just a dearth of i mean if i take like a script to a financier today the first question would also always be fawad khan hai mahira khan hai isme sabak amar hongi isme you know and literally the list stops at 11 and they are i mean a lot of them i i love i value their talent but a lot of times you find you're writing roles or characters which you feel they would not be befitting for you know so i'm just saying we still work under a lot of myopia where yes it's it's such a survival thing where you're thinking that oh the money needs to come back surely it does but i think nobody has ever thought of a larger sort of journey to the thing that you know how like i am a fan of smaller scale cinema and it does not translate into smaller films for me it does not i mean there could be films with big narratives with with like you know some great moments or great cinema in there but not perhaps just loads of money into it and i think nobody went with that mm-hmm. and that is what i get unless there is a collective larger goal to actually ensure that you know it's not just going to end this year or in a number only it won't survive it would be a hit and miss there would be a few films which will make money and um, i don't think that you know i for me it is quite a reverse gear i think a lot of cinema that has made money here is uh, some of it's incredibly good but a lot of it i'll be honest is just in a reverse gear somewhere in a hangover of 80s bollywood and that works i'm sorry as a filmmaker 
I do not want to get on that wagon. Mm. I won't, mm. even if I suffer, and I do. Mm. Mm. Kamran, I think finally the way I look at it. If you just let me interject, I want to pick up on both their points. Go ahead. Um, every industry has a life cycle. And that's the thing I'd said before also. Mm. Um, to the first point, what was in our business plan for the next five years? Mm. Okay, so we always built a five-year business plan. Mm. One was to start roaming cinemas in every district of Punjab and Sin. So where there would be a van, which would have a screen, audio, go village to village, show films, right? So it would reach the masses. So you would have an air, air screen come out, they'll charge 30, 40 rupees open, and they would just go rotate around in a uh, district. So it would reach in a much larger audience throughout the country. So we were capturing the socioeconomic ABC going to CD and E and that way. The second thing we were already doing was that we had talked to a British, and I forget the name, I'm terrible with names. Mm. I had actually gone and visited them in Chiswick or somewhere. Mm. And we were talking about starting their courses for film industry in Pakistan to open up a part-time school. So we, we would invest in that. That was the next three-year plan for us as well. So you see, that's an industry evolution. Had Indian films not stopped, we would be generating those cash flows to be able to start adding those things in the private sector. We already produced two films in the year before. Uh, so I was, my name's as a producer on two films, which we had supported right before the Indian band came through, right? So we were getting into more and more verticals, which would have helped the whole industry and take it up with us. The second thing is where, you know, to Sarmat's point that the reason that it becomes, and this is also what uh, Kamran was uh, alluding to, I can give you a bunch of film names like Abdullah, Jazba, Salud, Jeevan, Ati, Saez, Al Jalal. One made 20 lakh rupees, one made 4 lakh rupees, one made 27 lakh rupees, one made 13 lakh rupees. Saez, Al Jalal made 1 crore rupees. The problem is, no matter what you do, nobody wants to see these films, right? Mm -hmm. If somebody makes a 4 lakh rupee box office film, we lose money, they lose money. So everything comes down to Oh, the producers did not give us the right shows. They did not. Now, there was a person who took us to court. You know, we gave him a free show where we invited people, 150 people came. In the next 11 shows, he had 29 people show up. Hmm. We, had, we had in those 11 shows about 2,000 seats capacity. 11 people came. Hmm. What can we do, right? We took his film off after a week. He took us to court. Hmm. We can't do anything about that, right? Hmm. Hmm. 29 people over 11 shows hmm. where you had 2,000 some seats. So no, no, that's for sure. I completely agree, Pirsam. I think a, a film that gets some kind of attention, I mean, that is a good film for me. But again, exactly. I mean, what I'm trying to get at is the show by diversity, I don't mean a film well told, is a film well told? A story not nicely told is a story not nicely told. And nothing else is a biggest sort of a bigger sort of uh, instrument of measuring that than how people respond to it. So that's very important. I just feel that just thinking that, you know, a generalization on behalf of the audience that only a certain genre sells is where I have a problem. Otherwise, sure. I mean, in commercial cinema, I mean, they, there's so much that can be done. I'm a fan of Nabil Qureshi's film. I think they have a great gray matter thing going on also and responsibility mm -hmm. and they they do wonders on box office also so that's not the problem a bad film is a bad film i mean uh, and a good film is a good film mm -hmm. i think quite frankly yeah. Kamran, so the, the, is the money that brings in business mm -hmm. i'm just saying this okay. here's where i want you to come in again Kamran, so very simply i think this is the noise that i've been trying to make for a while and i hope you can convince people uh, much of it's may have come from the fact that our cities are such illiberal places. We are focused on housing colonies without building cities. We don't have enough entertainment space. I know you built the Lahore Alhambra Center, and that is a, that is a very important center for the arts, but I think we need a city like Lahore needs much many more theaters, not just cinemas, but theaters and many more public spaces, which we just don't have. 
And that stops the middle class from actually even being able to come out and demand this product. And unless we have a middle class based in the cities, in dense cities, and able to move around and enjoy this, uh, you know, enjoy leisure, they will not obviously demand leisure. And um, what we've got is by creating this sprawl and by restricting the space for entertainment and, and public use, we have kind of starved the middle class of, I don't know, that's the kind of thing I'm reaching for. Kindly help me complete it. What do you think? Kamran Sahib, unmute. Kamran Sahib. Uh, sorry, no, no, I'm okay. I uh -huh. I uh -huh. Alhamra, uh, I've, uh, it doesn't fall to my credit. It was made much before. But anyways, I have been into promoting uh, entertainment and layer and uh, all that stuff uh, all my life. Short supply. We don't have enough space for it. I totally agree. My thought is that this country's philosophy or thinking pattern has changed. It's a very uh, fun-loving and uh, joyful country or a society we have become, uh, one is joy killer mm -hmm. in the name of two things. One is security mm -hmm. and the other is the religion. Mm -hmm. uh, and we are obsessed by the, these two in the, at least in the last three, four decades. Mm -hmm. And we have pulled down all our uh, social values, particularly in terms of openness and, uh, and entertainment and enjoyment. Enjoyment is now virtually a sin, you know, mm -hmm. if particularly if it's in public eye. Sant ka kya hal hua, horse and cattle show kidar gaya, food street government bhi kidar gai, Piru's kya hai wo jo hote the, puppet shows wo kidar gaye. And uh, I can go on and on. Uh, cinema, cinema has pulled down. Ho gaye. Ye to inki hai, ne kuch bana liye hai. Uh, dekhte, dekhte wo uh, part and parcel theme, mele, thele, ye, wo, even up to 14 August or the Eid al Milad al Nabi, me, wo baat nahi hai, Eidho me, wo cheez nahi hai, jo kabi hua karti thi. So, is is ke piche, mere apne khayal se, ek aisi ye, main kya bolu, Wahhabism or is tarang ki school of thought chale hai, or wo madras se cheezein, and they have seeped into the minds of very pada lik. People, uh, generals, judges, bureaucrats, um, who, who are supposedly the engines of uh, countries' uh, governance. So, ab, uh, people uh, don't have the heart into the Khas taur pe jo cheez open me honi hai, last minute tak uska NOC hi nahi pata hota, milega ki nahi milega. Uh, LLF hona ho, aapko khabar hogi ki wo har saal till last day wo kabhi mil raha hota tha, kabhi nahi mil raha. ये कौन सा आपने जब बड़े इवेंट करना होता है बड़े का तो ये एक एक ओवरऑल एक बहुत बड़ा क्योंकि मेरे ख्याल से वी लॉस्ट टू स्पेसेस इन दिस कंट्री इन द लास्ट 30 40 इयर्स वन वाज टेरिटोरियल हमारे मुल्क के कुछ द अदर वाज कल्चरल टेरिटोरियल तो हमारी फौज ने बड़ी मेहनत करके कुर्बानियों से जैसे कैसे वो कुछ वापस हासिल कर ली काफी हद तक इफ नॉट टोटली लेकिन कल्चरल स्पेस वापस नहीं हो सकी वो और वो फौजियों ने तो नहीं करनी वो हम हम जैसी जो लोग हैं इन्होंने वापस लेनी थी लेकिन उस पे चूंकि कमिटमेंट नहीं है उस पे चूंकि एक विल नहीं है तो बातें हो जाती हैं हो जाए तो अच्छा है ना हो तो उससे भी ज्यादा अच्छा है ये कुछ इस किस्म का रवैया है और दैट इज व्हाई लॉट ऑफ आवर एक्टिविटीज एंड फेस्टिवल्स हैव गॉन and cinema is, is, is a very low priority thing with the, uh, with, I don't know, with the uh, government support, but at the same time, um, economics and I don't see uh, how cinema will be able to survive, particularly uh, where we stand today in terms of security issues, NOCs, and now the COVID. Mm -hmm. so, so it's uh, become a very, very, dicey thing jo invest kar bhi rahe the wo ab nahi kar rahe wo band kar rahe hain cinemas aur ye gulbarg mein itna bada wo kisi ne banaya usi waqt wo so why why should people be investing uh, unki private property hai why shouldn't they be making 
um, let's say shopping centers and flats. Mm. Good point. There you no, go, sir. Ji, are you going to allow questions today or no? By all means, absolutely, my daughter. Who can raise hands? Tell me, tell me. Bolen, zaroor bolen. Are there two or three things that I will ask quickly? Because we have a very illustrious crowd here today. The first thing is that this space is very important. I have to agree with Peter. Sahab. Yes, sir. 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 Yes, sir.
No, I mean, I, I, mean, I just wish it, <laughs> it was a slightly more optimistic, uh, uh, you know, um, okay. future to look forward to. But as other panel speakers have said, I totally agree with the once you have killed off a certain industry and a certain culture, it's very difficult to revive it. Uh, I, I'm, I'm sure it will happen, but at the moment it seems it's difficult. Well, folks, what, there it is. It's a dismal situation, but let me just say this, that look, the way technology is moving, the dreams of our ruling policymakers, which Kamran is very familiar with, I've noticed that for a while, the dream is that all of us will be employed in factories. Unfortunately, factories are becoming history now. The world is moving towards culture and culture is going to be a big industry going forward and we really must begin to understand the economics of culture. The only way to kind of think about the future of Pakistan is to liberalize the economics of culture and to gain benefit from the economic, economics of culture. Even Nigeria has begun to do it. Even um, Turkey. Nigeria makes a number of films. Nigeria has a huge <laughs> film industry. Next to Bollywood, next to Bollywood, right? So yeah. the thing is that this is, this is an important thing for us to wake up to and what PID is trying to do, because it is our mandate, that we have to think about growth and employment. And one of the ways that we will employ people in the future is in the culture industry. The prime minister wants tourism, as Kamran pointed out. Tourism cannot happen without culture. So we really must begin to put this jigsaw puzzle together and make it work. Thank you very much, folks. We will, inshallah, take this subject up again. It's been wonderful. I admire learning about the cinema industry from you. I will approach it with fresh eyes now. Thank you. All the best. Khuda Hafiz. Thank you. Thank you for organizing.